Welcome to the podcast Sube le volumen Conversation with the people who were with me In the world TV Carlos tonight Carlos tonight Historias de un reportero Hey everyone, it's Carlos tonight, and this week I want to introduce you to someone very special to me. We've hung out in Chicago, in Dallas, in San Diego, and we went to Canada together, and most recently to New York City. My soon-to-be 18-year-old nephew, Michael Fernandez, live and direct from Miami, Florida. What's up, Michael? How are you? Um, first of all, it's a pleasure, you know, you having me on the show. Um, I love, I, I mean, you're my uncle. Of course, I love your work. Um, I love, I love the podcast you do. And it's very inspirational. I'm pretty good as well. How about you? I'm doing good. I've been getting a lot of emails recently from fans asking about the show and about my TV career. And one of the questions was, have you ever interviewed a family member? And the answer to that is no, unfortunately. I've connected the media to family members for stories, but I never had the opportunity to, to interview any of you until now. <laughs> So that's the reason why I wanted to bring uh, Michael on the show. And because this weekend is a special weekend for you and your twin brother, Brandon. Uh, my nephews are turning 18 years old. How's it feel? Um, I, you know, today, a very funny thing happened. I actually um, signed my first um, field trip form by myself since I'm 18 <laughs> now. And um, it, it kind of hit me, right, that I, I barely know what I'm doing at this age. I mean, it's a learning experience, obviously, but um, it is crazy having that responsibility. Do you have any plans for your birthday? My plans for my 18th birthday. Um, what my grandfather does every year for my birthday, we end up getting breakfast at either McDonald's or Burger King. He's he's started doing this more recently since I was um, turning 16. But at this point, it's become more of a traditional thing, right? He gets me, me and my brother on um, breakfast. And um, from there, I want to go pick up a VR headset that my friend's been um, wanting to sell for a while. It's an Oculus Rift. Yeah, it's no, it's an Oculus Quest 2, my bad, or Meta Quest, as Facebook is calling it now. Um, I've been interested. I've been interested in it for a while because um, I think VR is a really new, like, water that game game developers are now touching and i want to get on that trend because it seems very interesting and then i'm gonna visit my mother for a little bit because she's been in the hospital recently um pretty much the entire month but i'm gonna visit her for a little bit and um celebrate my birthday there and then from there come back home start installing everything i need for the vr headset and then later in the night um we're going to actually probably go to the Cheesecake Factory around here. And then I'm going to invite my girlfriend as well to come so she can celebrate with us. <laughs> so there's that. All right. So besides your birthday this weekend, you're also graduating from high school next month. How are you feeling as you get ready to walk across that stage? Are you sad to say goodbye to your high school friends and your high school life? I'm not entirely too sad. <laughs> but like, I think reason being is because i would say high school has gotten very repetitive especially this senior year as we're all coming back from the pandemic that hit us back in my sophomore year and that pretty much took two like one year and a half from our whole like high school high school years now it's been a while since i graduated from high school and i can't um i was going to ask you what's one or two things that you're going to miss about high school I'll go first. <laughs> but as I was asking the question, I was like, I don't even remember anything about high school, except for writing in the school newspaper and being part of the video club and just getting to meet different people. Because uh, my high school was filled with like uh, different cultures and backgrounds. So I was learning from all of them. But there's not a particular thing that I, I would miss. How about you? I would say I would say what I would miss is a few of my friends. Um, they're under they're under um, my grade level. They're eleventh graders. Um, they're a part of my girlfriend's graduating class, which is the class of twenty twenty three, and they're they have been the most wonderful and most supportive people I've ever been around. 
um, they look up to me as someone older, which is, it's nice, but it's also someone, someone around my age group who, who have similar interests as me, as my graduating class doesn't really have the same interests as me as the class of 2023. However, they have very similar interests as me. And one other thing I am going to miss is the gaming club. Um, the gaming club has been very influential to me. It was a home where it's a home away from home. Basically, I met so many wonderful people, um, so many amazing experiences that I I could never right like buy with cash because it's just so wonderful having all these people around me that support me and just coming together as a community. It's amazing. Awesome, Michael. Are you nervous about heading into college? Yes. Um, I'm going to be, again, an undergraduate at this point. I'm going to be, you know, right. pretty much a freshman in college. But I think the one thing I fear most is getting lost in campus. Yeah. Because campus is the same way. Yeah, it's huge, apparently, which makes me a little nervous. Yeah, I couldn't. Uh, I would get lost. And then um, I didn't have that structure of high school anymore. So it was pretty much on my own. And you're going to experience that, too. So don't yeah. mess up. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, let's see. For many of us in the family, it's hard to believe that you're about to start college in the fall because we used to change your diapers. In fact, I started my television career a few months before you and your brother were born. Wow. I'm curious, uh, what early memory do you have growing up? Earliest memory, earliest memory. I think I was at either age three or four. I remember... I remember like being in the, in the same room as my brother it was my sister's old room it was this big spacious room and I remember waking up eating breakfast that day and I think me and me and my brother ended up going to the backyard hanging out and just not doing much or watching TV um I would also say pre-K I remember a little bit of pre-K again a lot of this is a haze because this happened <laughs> Do like, I remember any of that barely this was 15 years ago <laughs> I was three. Um, I think daycare, daycare is something I also sort of remember. My brother and I were in different classes. I remember he had more of the technology. He had more of the computers in my class. While I had more of a hands-on approach, right, with learning as he had more of a technological approach with learning. Which, seeing how those two things mix up where I'm more technologically advanced now because I'm learning about PCs while he's more focused on hands-on approaches is very ironic to me. It's very funny. Michael and I used to go to the movies a lot. And as a kid, I remember uh, Tia, your mom, your brother, and then your sister and me, we all went to see Avatar in Chicago. It was 2019. Michael Jackson had just died. I remember we went to his uh, childhood home in Gary, Indiana. Um, I think you were like five. Yeah, I remember this vividly that? not too vividly but there's there um hold up because my friends are actually contacting me because they actually want to watch the um the podcast as well <laughs> okay that's uh, carlos tonight.com carlos tonight.com um you can tell them refresh because um they they see the last episode but not the the current one that's streaming gotcha Okay, so anyway, um, you so you always remember your first film. My first film was Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and I went with Grandpa, my dad, and halfway through, he was snoring. I had to wake him up. I'm curious to know, um, what's one film that you remember watching as a kid, like your first film, and what was your favorite movie that we both went to see? Um, the first film I remember watching as a kid um, the one that really stays in my head was Princess and the Frog. I remember watching it with my aunt and uh, my mom, and I think it was my sister and my brother. And um, I was kind of do like dozing off. I don't remember yeah. much about it. And I, I recently rewatched it with my girlfriend like two two months ago, and um, it was one of the, one of my most favorite movies that I've watched recently. Now the favorite film we had. Um, it had to be definitely No Way Home. Not No Way Home. Yeah, no, it was No Way Home. Um, watching that was a very fun experience. Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man, No Way Home. Um, now, I think another one was Aquaman. Aquaman wasn't a good movie, but I think I think us just like kind of 
you know, making fun of it in the theaters was really yeah. like an emotional connection I had, which that that was the most enjoyable part that we both, you know, agreed that the movie was kind of not the best, but we still had a good time because we were entertaining each other. And that's something like nothing, like nothing money can buy. And it's just amazing. I really liked that you had the movie stuff from when we went to go see uh, Star Wars. Yeah. I can't remember which one. It, well, I do remember which one it was, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, I think, is it, I think, not last, is it probably Last Jedi? Not Last Jedi. It's, it's. It, yeah, because it was with Skywalker and, yeah. spo- spoiler alert, I think he died, right? Um, that's, I think that's the, um, the 11th <laughs> one, because there's the sequels, which are like three movies. I watched the ninth one with my aunt and Brandon, and then the 10th one with you. I just don't remember the name of the 10th one. Conversation with the people who were with me. You're listening to Carlos Tonight, and this week I'm talking with my nephew, live from Miami, Florida. His name is Michael Fernandez. You're about to turn 18 years old, and we're going down memory lane. Michael, you're the first family member I've ever interviewed. One thing we did together one year was we flew from Dallas to San Diego, where we attended Comic-Con. I had a blast. Tell us about your experience. My experience. Where do you want me to start? With, like, in (laughs) Dallas or, like, in Comic-Con? Because it was your first time in San Diego. Yeah, it was my first time actually really flying by myself um, Mm -hmm. when I went to Dallas to Texas, right? Miami to Dallas. And I'm not going to lie, it was kind of nerve-wracking to be on a plane by myself. My my personal experience with Comic-Con, it was amazing it was the most beautiful place san diego is a, a very beautiful place especially the sunsets um it was tell nice. everyone what you dressed up as um joker from persona 5 mm-hmm. um, and then you got to meet someone special right yeah i met one of the voice actors from persona 4 her name um the name of the character is nato she is like this detective right Um, I personally haven't played much of Persona 4, but my friends who were into the Persona franchise, that's one of their favorite characters because their whole storyline is very, very like pushing yourself out there. That's the main thing you could take away from her storyline. So it resonates with a lot of people. So a lot of people like that character. And I, you know, my friends were jealous. It was so cool because there's like thousands of people walking back and forth and she pulled you from the crowd because she saw your costume and then wanted to take a picture with you. And I think your head was about to explode. It was. was so I, was, I was starstruck. <laughs> like I was smiling. I was super happy. It was like one of the most amazing experiences yeah. being recognized like that. And then I dressed as Beast Boy. Not a good job for Beast Boy, but well, for last minute. Yeah, Matt, you know, last putting minute the cosplay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So then we went back to Dallas and then we went to the Latino Comic Con in Dallas, where you won second place with the costume you had on. Yeah. Uh, which is the same thing, right? Yes, um, Joker from Persona Five. What was that experience like? Because you had to go you know, on stage in front of all those people. Remember? I do remember. It was very nerve wracking, despite the like the that whole stadium not being very filled. It was still <laughs> presenting myself to a crowd. At the time, I this was like my summer of my freshman year. I was going into sophomore year. I never really kind of presented myself out there. I was more enclosed with myself, which thankfully I'm not like like that anymore because I'm more expressive now. I was, I'm more open with my emotions. But the main reason why that moment was more integral to me as a person was because it taught me to express, to open myself, you know, um, if you asked me before to be on this podcast in freshman year, I'd probably be like a stuttering like mess, but I'm able to talk because I'm more, you know, comfortable with it now. I'm okay yeah. with com- talking to a crowd of people or presenting myself because awesome. at the end of the day, what people think of me is what they think of me. But what I think of myself is how I see myself and how I act upon myself. Right. And that's awesome. the most important thing. What's um? Do you have a comic book you're reading right now? Um, 
as of now, I don't have anything on the table. I'm still reading one of my mangas, um, Berserk. Um, I'm on volume 15 now. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people, a lot of my friends actually, they're, they're reading it online. I personally don't like to read books online because I like having it physically. Mm -hmm. Because with my phone, I get easily more distracted on the apps. But with a book, I read the book, everything. I'm also reading right now, Great Gats Gatsby. Oh, nice. Okay. I, I love it. Um, my teacher actually gave me this copy because I told her that I never actually read Great Gatsby before. And she told me it's one of the best reads, you know, out there that I should see the movie. I'm like, perfect. Yeah. And um, I think I'm, I haven't started yet, but most definitely when I start having more free time because this this uh, whole month has been really hectic Yeah. in terms of school as well because testing and everything. Um, mm -hmm. And then my mom being in the hospital and then my birthday yeah. coming up. Hopefully by um, May 10th, I'm going to have a lot of free time because at that point, school kind of, our school for the seniors kind of just brushes us off. They're yeah. like, you're graduating. There's not yeah. much. <laughs> and that's what's happening. I mentioned earlier that you like to cosplay. Do you have any plans on um, cosplaying in the future? What's uh, some of the characters you're looking at right now? Um, so... A few of the characters I'm looking at right now is uh, Jason Todd or Red Hood mm -hmm. from um, the Batman Batman franchise um, because I think Red Hood Red Hood is a very cool character. Mm -hmm. um, Robert Pattinson Batman is also up there with um, a cosplay idea, and me and my girlfriend want to do it. I want to be Batman; she wants to be Catwoman, so it's gonna be a match. Oh, perfect! Me. So it's nice. Um, not really much cosplay right now because. Um, a lot of my time has been occupied with senior year. I haven't really gotten like anything to really look at. Do you, did you guys get your yearbooks and yeah, you're passing it around and doing signatures? Or is that something I did when I was a kid? You no, know, we still do it. Yeah. The, thing okay. is, um, the yearbook had a limited sale this year. I think they only had 100 copies. Yeah, what? I remember. Yeah, uh, only 100 copies out of uh, 200 out of a 200 uh, graduating class. And they priced it at $75, and they didn't advertise it at all for our school. Um, wow. They did it when um, Grad Bash, which is also the same day as my birthday, was happening, which Grad Bash is the trip um, us high schoolers, in at, at least in our county. Mm -hmm. We go to Universal, and we basically rent out the whole park for one day for our graduating class. I'm not going because it's on my birthday, and I want to spend my my birthday with my family and you know my girlfriend because if i went to grad bash i'd probably be you know not really satisfied because i go to universal almost every year as well every year, yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's like but my friend's like oh you should go i'm like nah like i've seen almost all of universal so i have to mention that fan expo in dallas is taking place june 17th michael do you have any future plans on attending any comic cons uh san diego might be an option we always got the hookup. <laughs> of course. Um, right now, any any state convention is out of like, because I don't really have a lot of people to go with. Like, because usually I went to cons with friends, right? Because it's a bunch of friends, teenagers with similar interests hanging out. But recently, um, my friend group has kind of like dwindled in size. Yeah. But um, the ones that are close to me are very close. The thing is, conventions can get really expensive. Mm -hmm. I, I I know for sure. Um, when we went to Comic Con, I wanted to get a figure uh, mm -hmm. of a character from Persona Five, and I when I was appalled with the um, price, it was seventy five dollars, and it was it it took me aback, right? And then when I went to SuperCon, not SuperCon, um, Gaming Con Expo, back in November um two year two or three years ago the prices there were more like 150 it's ridiculous yeah it's ridiculous but i i understand why because they import a lot of the stuff from japan conversation with the people who were with me in the world got lost tonight got lost tonight historias de un reportero Hey guys, 
guys, I want to uh, invite you to visit carlostonight.com. There you can find the latest information about the podcast, see upcoming guests, and check out past episodes. So now let's talk about uh, New York. We recently went to um, New York. Uh, it was your graduation gift. Yeah. So what was that experience like for you? It was your first time in New York. I would say it was, it took me aback. I remember when we got off the, I think it was like Philadelphia. We got off the Philadelphia train, New, New Jersey. It was the New Jersey train going into the station of New York and then exiting that station, seeing the city, um, the traffic, the billboards. It took me aback because Miami is not like that. I, I, oh. I, live, in a it's, I live in a suburb, right? Mm. So we don't have much people walking around, but seeing like a city filled with life, with people walking around, it took me aback. I was I wasn't overwhelmed, but I was ecstatic. It was something new, and I loved it. I loved New York. I loved the atmosphere. I like the hustle and bustle of New York. You know? Me too. It was my I think it was my fourth time being in New York. I can't remember, um, but it was my first time being there when it was so cold. And I remember it was one night that it was snowing, uh, but it was brutally, the brin- the wind was brutal. So um, 20 degrees one day, I remember, I think it was yeah. the day we were leaving New York. It was 22 yeah. degrees and it was, it was windy. Yeah. Um, another fun thing we did was we walked across the bridge and we went to Canada. Remember that? Yeah. Um, what'd you think about that? <laughs> um, I thought it was, it was... It didn't feel much different from like Buffalo to Canada, but the one thing that did strike me as odd was um, where we were, we were where we were staying at. Um, we were staying in Buffalo, and the thing is, it's a tourist place. Mm-hmm. So every season of every December or winter, it's a ghost town. The only only three things that were open was a Starbucks, yeah, right, a Hard Rock Cafe. And a Papa John's. I'm not even exaggerating. And, and the casinos, but since I'm I'm still a minor, mm-hmm. there was barely anything to eat there. But on the other side, um, which was Canada, there it was open. It was filled with life, and it kind of like struck me as odd. But seeing Niagara Falls was one of the most beautiful things I like I've ever experienced. It's it's, an, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It took me aback. Yeah, it was absolutely. Um... A great time uh, with spending time with all of you um, and getting to see Grandpa's face uh, when he saw the Statue of Liberty, which is this right there. And that was like my favorite picture. So one of my favorite. I showed my grand, um, my girlfriend that photo too, and she loves it. <laughs> yeah, I think he had a good time, except minus all the walking, right? Yeah, surprisingly, he was much more of a trooper than I imagined. He, <laughs> he walked through it without complaining, like, often. Yeah. I think everyone else was complaining except him. Me and him, because, like, walking wasn't that bad. I think the only time it did get bad was the third day we were there, mm-hmm. because we were walking almost every every day. So, like, my legs started getting sore. About every year around this time, I share a video of you guys, um on my social media and through the years it's kind of uh, evolved into something else and so this is the the latest version of it from two years ago it's birthday time let's celebrate all right how about a pair of twins first of all that video oops that video the beginning part uh was when you were guys were turning one years old one year old and um your sis or my my sister your tia um, thanks to her, you guys made your television debut uh, in NBC on NBC in Chicago. Uh, do you remember seeing that video at all? Um, I remember just someone showing me. I think it was Tia showed me that video um, <laughs> when I was like 14. I saw it and I was I, I I try looking for it from time to time. Yeah, I can't find it because um, it's one of those videos where it exists and then it just resurfaces. You know, every other year or something. Every other year. um, Because I was trying to look for the original and I couldn't. Yeah, they probably have it in an archive somewhere. (laughs) Which, uh, like, that's another topic about lost media. A lot of, like, media isn't, like, archived properly. They become lost. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, like, a problem sometimes. Nice. Well, um, so you made your TV debut and now you made your podcast debut. 
Before we let you go, any shout outs uh, you want to give? Um, first of all, I want to give a shout out to my friend, my friend, um, my friend Jake, my friend Ingris for being interested in the podcast. And another big shout out I would give is to my wonderful, wonderful girlfriend of one year. Her name is Jackie. And um, every ever since I met her, like every day has been like something like a new experience. She she teaches me about things that I didn't even know about myself. She has put me on this like lesson in life of learning and creativity. We actually we are actually taking care of um four dogs right now. Wow, yeah. four dogs. Yeah, um, we have Oreo, which is the mother, and then her three puppies. Uh, there's Bear, there's Caramel, there's Mocha. They're you know they cause ruckus, but we all love them. <laughs> right. Um. Recently, um, Bear actually had fleas, so we're cleaning oh, him up. We're putting antibiotics on him. But um, I don't know. Just being with her has really, um, really brightened brightened my life up. She she's amazing. I hope like I hope for the best for her. You know, if she's listening, um, I love you. Awesome. <laughs> thank you for and, having me here. And so your birthday is this weekend. Uh, what do you want for your birthday? What do I want for my birthday? Um, I'm not really too sure because um, with prom that's happening May 6th, I've, I've gotten stingy with like spending other people. I feel guilty spending other people's money ever since... Um, um new york i kind of felt bad but like my my aunt reassures me that it's okay she had this planned out which thank god i don't feel as guilty but um with the vr headset i'm planning to get um i i kind of want a um lens cleaner because um with the oculus it's uh its lenses can get easily scratched and that kind of ruins the experience because you can't replace those lenses so, or um, a carrying case, either one, a lens cleaner or a carry. I think there's one that comes with both, but um, yeah, it's it's a new technology that is very delicate. It is very delicate and it's, uh, yeah. Cool. Well, I got my checkbook out, so I'll, I'll write you a check and send it to for you and your brother. And uh, I don't like giving out money, but since I don't, I want to get the gift right and I want to make sure that you get what you want, you know? Thank you. So that'll be coming in the mail, snail mail. <laughs> uh, but no, um, thanks for being here with me. I love you. I can't wait to see uh, you know more of you and can't wait to see you succeed and live your best life. Thank you for joining me. Of course, Tio. Um, thank you for having me here. I love you too. Historias de un reportero. And that's a wrap this episode of Carlos Tonight. It was written and produced by yours truly, Carlos Correa. My theme was by Skin Gales. Visit carlostonight.com for the very latest on the podcast, the upcoming guests, and check out past episodes. That's carlostonight.com. Dale que bien.